everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to do a wrap up of the last few things that I've read. I don't know if I've been reading more or I just haven't updated in a while, but I have a lot of books to get to, so I think I'm gonna split this one up. And I'll first start talking about Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson. Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson is a book about Jade, a high schooler who's attending school on the white side of town. And in this book, Jade is really pensive and thoughtful about her life and where she grows up, how she sees her mom and uncle, and how she sees other people in public. At first she's really reserved about relating her lived experience to others and showing how their perceptions are wrong. But over time she really becomes confident in herself to speak up for herself and for who she is. This is a book that really focuses on intersectionality in all facets. Particularly, it's because Jade is paired with a mentor who is black and did not grow up poor like Jade. She grew up middle class upper middle class. And Jade kind of shows her mentor Maxine how her perceptions of Jade's life are really wrong. We get to see how Jade also deals with microaggressions which happen to her often in different public places and how other people don't really believe that what's happening to her has to do with how she looks. I also really liked how in this book she uses art and language to advocate for herself and she really likes collaging and you can see that in the cover. The writing is really straightforward and sentimental and quiet and those are all things that I I really look for in YA. This is a book that really looks inward and those are some of my favorite books. It's mostly being in Jade's head. I thought that the resolution was really satisfying and I really loved being in Jade's world. The next book that I read was The Rules Do Not Apply by Arielle Levy and she is a writer and a reporter and this memoir focuses on her miscarriage, her divorce, how she dealt with an alcoholic partner and feeling lost completely in her planned life that she had worked so hard for. She's a really talented writer, I think, and she has kind of like a poetic style to her writing, which I liked, but I thought that this book was kind of unnecessary or kind of lacked insight. When I read memoir, I read it to learn about others' experiences, their lives, their regrets, and their motivations, and Levy really crafts a story in this book in which she is never at fault, and she does not seem interested at all in looking at herself and looking at the decisions that she has made and looking at the mistakes that she has made in order to analyze how she could have done better there or how she can change in the future. It felt really dramatic and tragic because that's the way she writes it. I mean, what happened to her is truly a tragedy and, and really difficult to deal with. But I, I really felt that the way that she delivered it to you, leaving you bits of information and kind of dangling it in front of you, made it more sensationalized than it needed to be. It, it needed to be kind of serious, but I think it was just kind of jumping back and forth and kind of giving you little cliffhangers as if that's what I'm really there for. I could go to fiction for that. I would have really been interested to learn why she made the bad decisions that she made in her relationship. How do we as people make mistakes and how do we get through it? Instead, we really don't get a profound look at any of that. The only thing that I see that this author may have gained is some emotional release to kind of let go of all the things that she has bottled up about her experience. If writing this made her feel better, then that is a an accomplishment, but it didn't feel like a memoir that I could get behind. The next book that I read is Educated, and this was a memoir which I did feel the author does change, grow, and analyze herself. In this memoir, Tara Westover traces her upbringing growing up in a survivalist Mormon family, kind of in the middle of nowhere in the mountains, and they really, as a family, relied on natural herbs instead of like the medical establishment, so they did not believe in going to the doctor. Um, they also did not send their children to school, and instead they learned school on their own at home because they felt like traditional public education was brainwashing. And they also used their children for manual labor in the mountain and it often led to a lot of accidents which then needed to be treated with like nothing, natural herbs. Her father is really a paranoid man who believes in conspiracies, he believes that the government's coming after him, and they also pile up weapons and ammunition in order to prepare for the end of the world that they think is coming. So it's kind of really interesting to think about the fact that there are a lot of people in the United States and across the world that do believe in these survivalist terms that they live this way. The best of this memoir begins, I think, when Westover starts attending BYU. She originally went there because she was going to become a choir teacher. She falls in love with all the history classes that she has to take that are gen eds. Hearing about her ignorance turn into discovery was so incredibly gripping to me. Listening to her begin to realize like the very enclosed world that she lived in. You know, what is the Holocaust? What is the civil rights movement? 
diamond. Boesa becomes completely fascinated by world events and world leaders, and she begins gaining more opportunities. Um, she ends up studying abroad, and that also opens up her worldview. And at the end of it all, she earns a PhD in history. To me, this book poses two really big questions. To what extent should you accept and forgive your imperfect family? When is it okay to let go of the toxic family members who verbally, physically, emotionally, mentally manipulate you, gaslight you, make you feel like you're living in a completely different reality? Her story is one to me of how education can completely change the way you assess the world to give you the tools to help you make up your own mind and your own decisions about your life. I really, really liked Educated and this is the kind of memoir that I seek. And next up, I'm going to talk about A Higher Loyalty by James Comey. Yes, another current political brouhaha book that I have read. <laughs> <laughs> but one that I'll say that I enjoyed intensely more than Michael Wolff's Fire and Fury. In this book, James Comey, who was fired by Donald Trump for reasons that are still hard to decipher, tells us his side of the 2016 election, his tenure under Trump and his firing, as well as all the things that happened before all of that in his life that have informed the way he views ethical leadership. First, I want to say that nothing that is necessary to understanding his point of view about the 2016 election or about working under Trump happens until page 150 and page 200-ish, respectively. So if you are coming here for that, I think you should know that because when I went into this book, I didn't know that the first 150 pages were going to be about him working in a grocery store and how he saw his manager and how his manager provided him with this way of viewing leaders, as well as when he worked as a U.S. attorney in the state of New York. Those are all things that are a little bit interesting, like him talking about prosecuting Martha Stewart and him prosecuting mobsters, but really he uses all of those situations in his life to talk about how different leaders came off to him and like what worked and what didn't for him. I think of the 150 pages, in the forefront. What's most interesting is hearing him talk about George W. Bush and Barack Obama and their leadership styles, their personalities, their temperaments, and the way that they um, led their administrations. To Comey, Bush is really funny, but in a way where he wants to make you the butt of the joke, and he never wants to be the butt of the joke. Obama, in contrast, in Comey's eyes, is confident, thoughtful, and enjoys debate and brings in lots of voices in these debates. And this I found really interesting, of course, because Comey came in with these preconceptions. He donated to all of Obama's opponents, basically, and he really was thinking that Obama was going to try to manipulate him to act in a way that was overreaching as an FBI director. And what he found is that Obama was kind of the opposite of that, and he let Comey lead the FBI as it should be, uh, as a completely separate entity. I actually thought Comey discussing the decisions to release the statements during the election were kind of persuasive. I understood where he was coming from and while it really muddled the election and I hope that there's new policy that is put in place in case this were ever to happen again, I do think that he did it with the idea that if Hillary Clinton were to become president and they did find something in those emails that they didn't make the public aware of, it would have looked even doubly worse. And I mean, I know hindsight is twenty twenty, and we don't have a President Clinton, but I can see where he is coming from in that time and moment as an FBI director, that really tough decision of what he's supposed to do. And for that reason, that's why I say that I hope there's just better policy going forward. After talking about the 2016 election, Comey, as expected, discusses how Donald Trump compared to other leaders that he's witnessed in the past is very egotistical, transactional, insecure, and why we should really care about having ethical leaders leading our country. I like listening to it on audiobook, but I do think that kind of like the reason you're here doesn't start until two-thirds into the book. And that's it for this video and what I wanted to wrap up here. I want to keep these videos short and then I'll come back with another wrap-up really soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you read any of these or would like to read any of these, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye!